my name is Miss Megan, and today we are going to be learning about photosynthesis. Photo means light, and synthesis is to put together. For this lesson, you need three simple materials, a pencil, a blank piece of paper, and crayons. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we need to understand is how plants get their energy. In order to grow, plants need energy. Do you know how they get that energy? from sunlight, water, and air. And the nutrients in the soil help them grow as well. Producer is something that is able to actually produce or make its own food. Plants take those three main ingredients, sunlight, water, and air, and they actually make their own food. Photosynthesis is the process plants go through to turn sunlight, water, and air into a sugar. That sugar can then be used as energy for the plant to grow. We are going to actually create an illustration together to help us understand how this process works. So I want you to pause this video for a minute while you get your materials. Okay, we are ready to spend some time getting creative and artistic. So the first thing I want you to do is you are gonna create an illustration that's all your own on this piece of paper and it can have any details you want but the main feature of our illustration is going to be one single plant it can be any plant you want just make sure that it has these really important parts your picture needs to have a plant with roots a stem leaves and a flower any other detail is up to you you can pick your own color Maybe your plant is getting visited by an animal like a bee or a butterfly. Maybe you're in the picture with the plant. Maybe there are worms underground. This is your chance to get creative. So have fun with it and go ahead and pause the video. When you are finished, you can hit play again and we are going to work together as a team to change this picture into a diagram. So we'll talk more about that when you're ready. Here's the picture that I created. You can see I chose to draw a simple sunflower with a few extra details like a honeybee pollinating the flower and a couple worms wiggling underground with the roots. So now we're gonna add a few more details together. Please add a bright shining sun, five raindrops, and some squiggles or swirls to represent air. You can see my example here. Now that our illustration is ready, we're gonna turn it into a diagram. A diagram is a picture with labeled parts. We are gonna add three labels, sunlight, water, and air. So first, using your pencil, add the word sunlight right next to where you drew your sun. Then you can add water right near your raindrops and air near your air squiggles or swirls or whatever you decided to draw to represent air. As you're adding your labels, let's think about what plant parts are going to be used to get these different things. Plants have lots of different parts and they each have different jobs to keep the plant healthy and strong. What plant parts do you think would be in charge of getting the water, the sunlight, and the air. Any ideas? Do you think it'll be the same parts or different parts? You can see that I added my three labels. Can you double check that I spelled everything correctly? Let's think about how the plant uses its different parts to take in these three important ingredients. So we're gonna start with the water. Think about when those raindrops fall to the ground, how would the plant get to that water? What part would it use? The roots. Nice job, scientist. Now that we know that the roots have the job of sucking up the water, we're ready to add our next feature to our diagram. You can take a look at my example here. 
we're going to add a line using blue crayon that goes from our label that says water down into the roots and up through the stem and into one of the leaves. You can choose which leaf on your picture to add the water to. Do you know what plant part absorbs the sunlight? The leaves. The leaves have the important job of absorbing sunlight. So just like we did with the water, this time I want you to use a yellow crayon, start at your sun, and draw a line that leads from the sun directly into the same leaf where your water went just like you can see here. And finally, the last thing our plants need to go through the process of photosynthesis. Hmm, what are we missing? We've talked about water and sunlight. What does the plant still need to grow? Air. Hmm, do you have any guess as to how the plant absorbs or takes in the air? The leaves again. The leaves take in the air through little breathing holes. You can see them here. This is a picture of a leaf under high power magnification using a microscope. Can you see those little donut shaped structures? Those are called stomata, and that is what the plant uses to breathe in the air. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's add our final step to our diagram. We need to show that the leaf has the job of taking in the air. So using any color you want, draw a line from your air label that goes into the same leaf as the rest of the ingredients. The leaf does a lot of work to keep the plant growing. You can think of the leaf sort of like the kitchen of the plant, right? That's where the three ingredients, sunlight, water, and air, all come together are mixed and form a sugar, which the plant can use as energy to grow. The process of taking those three ingredients inside of the leaf, inside of that kitchen, and turning them into energy is photosynthesis. Okay, scientists, are you ready? we're gonna set up an experiment to learn a little bit more about photosynthesis. So we know that in order for a plant to get energy to grow, it needs sunlight, water, and air in order to go through that process called photosynthesis. Do you think a plant could grow in the dark? Do you think a plant or a seed could grow with just a little bit of sunlight? As scientists, we ask a lot of questions. Right? We're always wondering, we're always curious. And then we want to learn the answers to our questions. And the most fun way to learn the answer to a question, in my opinion, is to set up a scientific experiment. So today, that's what we're going to do. Here is a shoebox with a tiny hole on the top. We are going to see if we can grow a bean plant inside of this shoebox. I will make sure that the seeds get water and air but the seeds are only gonna get the sunlight that can come through this hole. That is what we're gonna be testing. All you need to replicate this experiment at home is a shoebox of any size, a little bit of soil, a container with drainage holes on the bottom, something to put that container on top of so water doesn't spill everywhere, and of course, a few seeds. The seeds that we're gonna use for this experiment are kidney bean seeds. Here they are. You might recognize them because we eat kidney beans to get our own energy. First thing we need to do is get the seeds set up where they're gonna grow. So for that, I have a little cup with the holes on the bottom to make sure that there's drainage. And I need to fill this cup with soil. I'm only filling the cup about 
three quarters of the way because now we need to add our seeds. I'm going to add two seeds. See them nested right in there? Now I'm gonna cover them up with the remainder of the soil. Pat it down gently, not too hard. We're almost ready. This little cup on the bottom is just to catch any water that drains through so that our shoe box doesn't get all wet on the bottom. Next, I wanna make sure that our seeds get some water to wake them up and get them started. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. We don't want them to get too soaking wet, just enough to keep them moist. And if I added too much, it'll come through those drain holes and be caught by this lid. Let's make a prediction. A prediction is an educated guess about what will happen in the future. The cool thing about science is that there are no wrong predictions, so just take your best guess. The point of setting up this experiment is to learn something new. So your prediction might end up being wrong, and that's okay. That's one of the reasons why I love science so much. To help you make your prediction, let's think about what we already know about plants. After doing our illustration together, we understand a little bit more about how photosynthesis works. In our experiment, I will make sure that the plants get water and air, but the sunlight will be limited to what can make it through that little hole in our shoebox. Do you think that that light will be enough for the plant to grow? Or do you think that the seeds won't be able to grow because that light is just not enough? Flip your piece of paper over. On the back of the diagram we created earlier, we're gonna write our prediction for this experiment. You can predict, yes, I think the seeds will grow, or no, I do not think the seeds will grow. Go ahead and pause this video while you write down your predictions, and then we'll be ready to continue. Now I did add one more twist to this experiment to make things interesting. The last thing we have to do is put our seeds inside of the shoebox and close it up. But on the inside of the shoebox, it looks a little different than what you might expect. Here's our shoebox with just that hole on the top. But on the inside, I created a maze. So the way it will work is we'll put our seeds planted on the bottom. And this is going to stay closed, so those seeds are only getting that little bit of sunlight. As we're thinking about our predictions, you already made your prediction. Yes, the seeds will grow, or no, the seeds will not. Let's just think about one more prediction we could add. If, and it's a big if, if the seeds are able to grow, do you think that the plant will actually be able to find the sunlight by growing around the maze and up to the hole? Do you think plants are able to figure that out, able to actually find the sunlight? Now this particular experiment does take time before we'll get the results because seeds, even with full sunlight, take about a week to start growing. I don't know how long it will take with only the sunlight that comes through this hole. We'll find that out together. So I'm gonna keep the shoebox on a sunny windowsill in my house. I'll make sure it gets water. It, there's definitely plenty of air. And we'll see what happens together. I can't wait. So I will create a second video that has the results of this experiment so we can learn together about what happens when we try to grow seeds inside of a shoebox. Will it be able to go through photosynthesis and get the energy it needs to be able to grow? Are there any other questions that you're wondering about how plants grow or how photosynthesis works? This would be a great time to do a little bit of research on your own. You can either use the internet as a tool, a book, or set up another experiment. Wonder, come up with a question, and maybe work with your family or with an adult to come up with a good way to test that question and set up your own experiment to learn some answers. 
Nice job today, scientist. Thank you so much for taking this time to learn with me, and I can't wait to check back in and let you know what happens with our experiment. Bye for now.